So good evening. Welcome everybody to this um, Zoom on the mudras of the extraordinary vessels. So what I'm going to do is explain how I've developed the mudras. There will be on the recording a better image of the mudras than I've got here, um, a clearer image. And, um, and then once I've explained about them, We'll do them with one of the uh, one or two exercises for each vessel, and then we'll finish with a meditation. So, just to explain a little bit about how I developed them, um, the first one that I developed was actually one for all eight extraordinary vessels because. I often feel that all eight, the eight vessels are often a bit separated, whereas they're actually all interconnected. And just very briefly, the extraordinary vessels are really the first ones to emerge in physical form. And they're very connected to our essence, our jing, which in Chinese medicine is the energy that we get at the moment of conception. So they really are like the, the egg and the sperm coming together and sharing the jing, that's the beginning of the extraordinary vessels. And we don't have any organs at that, that phase. We're just um, cells um, differentiating. And that's really how the extraordinary vessels then evolve. And then first we see in our physical form, the conception and the governing vessel when we're two weeks after conception, a bilaminar disc, and then we get a trilaminar disc, and then we start developing and then later all our organs form. I'm really simplifying that. But just to say they really are at the beginning of our development. You could even say they arise before conception, because how did the egg and the sperm come together? But they're definitely there first, and they're very connected to our ancestral energy, our basic DNA. But then they're modified as we grow, so they're also connected to the outer environment, and their influence, like our DNA, is influenced. So to, to first express the energy of interconnection and the eight, which is essentially the infinity symbol. The first one just came while I was working and I wanted to do some work around the mouth, which is the ending of governing and conception. And then it goes in and enters our brain. And I found myself putting my thumb and index fingers together around the mouth of my client. But then also then my other fingers just felt they needed to link up. And so that's the first one, really. You put your thumb and your index finger, and that forms an eight. Hang on, I'll show you. Oh, yeah, an eight. And then the other four just touch. So your middle finger, your ring finger, and your little finger join up. And then you can have them either, as I just described, you can use them in shiatsu as well and place them on the body, connecting, if you want, with the four main organs of the extraordinary vessels which are our brain so you could actually put it on yourself you could put it between your eyes on your third eye and you could have your fingers touching and then connect to heaven or you could turn it down that's a bit harder to do on your own but you can do it with clients connecting with earth because each of the vessels connect more with heaven or more with earth and then you can connect it with your heart i'm doing it fairly quickly now because i'm just going through the um the areas that we're going to touch when we do the exercises but you can connect it with your heart and you can connect it with your palaces your womb your reproductive organs i call them the palaces now they're also important organs of the extraordinary vessels because the brain and the womb or the palaces, because it's actually more than the womb, it's the womb, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, all of our reproductive organs, and they don't have a meridian in the 12 meridian system because they're so important, they're fundamental, and that's also the role of the extraordinary vessels in day-to-day -day energy, really, that brain reproductive organs palace connection is really quite fundamental so this is the first mudra for all eight the second mudra i'm starting with governing and conception vessels so governing and conception are the easiest ones because they start on their perineum and they're really the midline of the body and they come up 
they the the front is the yin the conception and finishes at our lower mouth and the yang is our back and comes over top of our head and between the third eye and finishes here so that was how i developed the first mudra um but there each of the vessels has what we call an a regulating point which is said to help to regulate the whole pathway so when we work with the vessels we can connect with the four core organs that i've just described by just connecting with them we can also work the pathway of the vessel that i've just described but there is a regulating point for each vessel so the regulating point for the governing vessel the regulating point is always a yang point for a yang vessel or it's at a point on a yang meridian for the yang vessel and a point on a yin meridian for the yin vessel. Governing vessels regulating point is small intestine three and conception vessels is lung seven. So for the mudra, I decided to link the, the finger of the lung with the finger where the meridian of the small intestine goes, but remembering that the Extraordinary vessels give birth to the lung and the small intestine. So they're there first, but they bring the lung and the small intestine together. And then our other three fingers are just creating space. So it's like, this is the energy of governing the conception vessel. It brings together, but it's very connected to space. So we want to feel when we hold our hands like this, that we are connecting with our lungs and our small intestine, but we're also connecting with space. So hold that for a minute. And then each of the pairs of extraordinary vessels, this is governing and conception are really the first to arise. And they're in the, what we call the inner group that basically lie along the midline of the body and all connect with the perineum. They're the first to emerge. And they're more connected to our time in the womb and our midline. Then we have an outer group, which is made up of some vessels called the stepping vessels or the chow, the yin and the yang, chow, stepping, and the yin and the yang way or linking. And with the regulating points, there's a, the pair in the inner family is connected with a pair in the outer family. And so governing and conception vessel, which is on the inner family, is connected with the stepping vessels, which are on the outer family. And so within the outer family, we have stepping and there the, the regulating point of the governing and conception vessel becomes a paired point. So it's also a point of the outer family, but the main regulating point for conception and governing is, as I just described, lung seven and small intestine three. And that really shows our connection first to heaven, but governing and conception do have to connect to earth and met on our perineum. And the paired point basically enables it to connect to earth. So the paired point, of the governing and conception vessel is the main regulating point of the yin and the yang stepping vessel. And so its stepping vessel is how we walk, how we step, and its regulating point is in our foot. That's why it's called the stepping vessel. It was actually Machiotta that called it them the stepping vessels. Our capacity to step, in many translations, it's known as the heel or the ankle vessel. Its ideogram actually means, shows two legs with something fine at the top. So it's our connection with our legs and the outer world and our the earth and how we walk and bringing how we bring that information back to our brain. And so actually the last point on the stepping vessels is bladder one, which is our eyes. So you have the yang stepping vessel, and the yang stepping vessel, we'll do the exercise in a moment, but it's more about, you know, walking and movement and turning. And the yin, when we close our eyes, the most yin is when we go to sleep. So there's that real shift between the yin and the yang. And stepping 
In some ways, that's not the best translation. Sometimes I think, though, I used to think it was great because it's more than heels and ankle, but it's also when we rest and when we sleep. It's really about how we adapt to the 24 hour cycle. So the stepping is actually the most closely related pair with the 12 meridians, which also regulate together the 24 hour cycle. So the stepping vessels regulating points are in the ankle, kidney six on the inside, just below the tip of the ankle bone, on the edge of the bone and bladder 62 on the outside. And in the hands, bladder is very linked with the six great meridians. And so we think of bladder ends in our little toe and our, it's very related to our little finger, which is the small intestine. Small intestine and bladder form one of the, 12, the six great meridians. Um, it's the same energy in a way, the arm branch and the leg branch, bladder and small intestine. On the foot, kidney, Kidney is actually paired with, in the six great meridians, with the heart. And heart is also um, the little finger. So it made sense for me when creating a mudra for the stepping vessels that I used the same fingers. Also, because kidney on the foot, yeah, is related to the heart. But kidney one is the ball of the foot. So kidney actually doesn't connect with one of the feet, one of the toes. I always think of kidney as connecting a lot to the similar area on the hand, heart protector. And so I've, I've kept the same fingers because, kid, because the thumb can connect a bit with heart protector. But this time, instead of thumb and little finger touching and then the other fingers being open, the other fingers I close and so the thumb and the little finger are no longer touching and this shows a bit more our connection to earth. So with this mudra, I put my hands down and I kind of really put those three fingers in the middle onto my thighs. So I really get that anchoring and, and almost a bit like, you know, walking and stepping and but it's first a connection to earth and then a connection back to the brain and to heaven. So that's the mudra for the stepping vessels. So next we go to the other group on the inner family. And there's a nice symmetry in Chinese medicine that in the inner family, you've got the centre line governing and conception vessel that I just described. But first, they're connecting to heaven. But then you have the girdle vessel, which is in the centre and is said to regulate everything in its pathway. The top part of it is the bottom of our rib cage. The top part is our diaphragm and the bottom part is our perineum. So actually girdle is a really good name for it because it's actually more than just the physical pelvis. It goes right up to the ribs. And because of this, well, the legs connect with it and the arms are connected um, to the movement of our breath and our rib cage and our heart and our lungs. And in Chinese medicine, girdle vessel is said to regulate everything in its pathway. So that's a lot. Most of our major organs are in its pathway, but also everything to do with our pelvis, our pelvic floor, and so on, and it's really the centre of our body. So it's the, the balance in a way between the yin and the yang. And it's also, and it's interesting because in terms of its pathway, it has the front is more yin and the back is more yang. So you have quite a lot of yin points on the girdle vessel. But also it regulates what's below and what's above but it's quite earthy, along with penetrating vessel, which penetrating vessel is each side of conception vessel on the front, 
following the traditional, following the 12 meridian, the kidney line in the abdomen and in the chest. But it also continues up to going around governing and conception vessel. Remember, these are the last points of governing and conception and penetrating goes around, but it also has a branch into the eyes, connections with the brain. And it also has breast channels, um, a bit like the heart protector in the Mazanaga system, but breast channels. And I see it as a bit like the inner wings of the heart, our breasts are protecting our heart. So there is a connection to heaven, but it's the first movement down to the earth in our legs. So it's actually how we anchor, how we arrive, how we first stand before we then start walking. So it's before the, the stepping vessels and also embryologically it forms before. And that's really the energy of the penetrating vessel. The only one of this inner group that actually physically in its pathway connects to earth. And it's all, it's a downward movement because it's the first movement. So girdle and penetrating their main regulating points as you can probably imagine maybe i already said are in the feet and it's the penetrating vessel spleen four and the girdle vessel it's gallbladder 41 so in the hands the spleen or the big toe is equivalent to the the big the thumb the, the big finger the thumb and that's the tie-in that's the spleen and lung meridian like we described with the um small intestine and bladder the tai yang this is the tai yin and so we're going to be using the thumb for the penetrating vessel and the girdle vessel its main regulating point is bladder Gall, sorry, sorry, gallbladder 41, which is in the fourth, the, the end point of gallbladder is the fourth toe. And so in the hands, you've got gallbladder or the Shao Yang is triple heater. Triple heater in the hands is the fourth finger. So basically we wanna bring the fourth finger and the thumb together, but also for the penetrates, for the, Penetrating vessel, the paired point is a heart protector point. This penetrating vessel is protecting the heart. So I actually bring these three fingers together for the girdle vessel and the penetrating vessel, the thumb for the earth for the penetrating, the fourth finger for the wood, for the gallbladder for the girdle, and then the heart between the two. Now, because they're more connected to earth, we bring them together. So it's a bit like the one for all eight, except our thumb, our index finger is not linked with our thumb. It's out in the air, touching, and so is the fifth finger. So there's this, that connection to heaven. But again, this is the mudra I created for girdle and penetrating, dai and chong quite similar to all eight because they are quite complex and and I quite like when you see it together <laughs> connecting with the womb and then that downward energy is very much the penetrating you could turn it out outwards you could bring it to the heart and that way it would be turned out as well so it's how we connect with others you could bring it to the throat or to the brain so that's the mudra for girdle and penetrating, chong and dai. And so we, like with the governing and the conception, I wanted to keep the same fingers because heart protector six, which is the paired point for the penetrating vessel, is the regulating point for the linking vessels, which are the way vessels. Now the way vessels or the linking vessels, you have a yin and a yang, and they're a bit like with the stepping, we emphasize the legs and walking and stepping. The linking vessels are much more in our arms and they're much more about our 
celestial nature and our connection with birds. So there aren't so many points in the legs or even in the pelvis so directly. Well, there's some for the yin way in the abdomen, but they're much more our upper body and how we open our bigger wings. So the penetrating vessel is our little wings of the heart and the linking vessels are the bigger wings so that we can fly into space. And remember, we're connected with space. So remember the government uh, penetrating and girdle are first more with the earth. And now they're linking or they're paired ones are more with the heavens. So it's the same fingers that we connected for the penetrating and the girdle because the regulating points of the linking vessels for the yin, it is actually heart protector six, so middle finger. And for the yang, it's triple heater, so the fourth finger. So it does completely make sense that you have the same fingers connecting because it, there's the echo, there's that pairing, lower body earth or upper body. So the penetrating, sorry, the linking are the upper body. So we have them like we did with the governing and conception, the hands apart, but we've still got this connection because they're wings that bring to the center. So we keep the three in the middle. We have the uh, index finger and the little finger in space. So I hope you got that. I have got the chart that can help you, but now we're going to do some exercises for each of these vessels and incorporate the mudra within the exercise, which will give you a bit of time to review the mudra and connect with it and see how it resonates with you. So for these, we're going to stand up. So I'm just going to slightly change my camera angle while I give you a moment or also to stand up. And as we stand up, we can also connect just with a simple exercise for each pair of vessels. So going back to governing and conception vessel, this midline energy, a bit like the chakra system, in but it's the Chinese equivalent of the chakra system, essentially, I feel. The mudra is the sum for the um, air and space, and the little finger for the bladder and the kidney connection, the thumb also for the bladder and the kidney, and also the thumb for lung seven and the little finger for small intestine three, the regulating points of governing and conception. And our fingers are open, the, the index, middle and ring finger are open to space and we just gather the space with our thumb and our little finger, we stand tall. And so we just stand and we can feel with our eyes either open or closed, the movement of breath through our whole spine. The in-breath is sort of rising. We might even slightly lift up our hands as we breathe in. And then as we breathe out, we might lower our hands if you want. Breathing in, feel the lengthening of the spine and the relaxation of the pelvic floor. Feel the openness to space. Breathing out, just softening your arms back down and feeling the drawing in and the contraction of the pelvic floor. So breathing in, a connection to space, lengthening of the spine, opening up through the top of the head, breathing out, just gently sinking to earth and just feeling the connection to perhaps our heart or our palaces. So I just did that a few times. We might even just come onto our toes to free up our heels from the earth to feel that lightness. That's conception and governing, more of a connection first to space. And then we could be on our toes and just bring our arms up and down a few times with the in-breath, lengthening, and with the out-breath, 
just lightly drawing back to earth because their regulating points are in the hands, not the feet. And so then we can come back down and bring our hands down and turn them, the fingers to the earth, because of course there is a connection to the earth. And we can just gently curl towards the earth with our hands still in the mudra, turning down and relaxing our head, neck and shoulders. And feeling now the yin of the conception vessel protected by the yang of the governing vessel. And we can just stay in this position, which is also very like our fetal position with the inside, the front, protected by the outside, the back. Showing really these are the first ones that emerge. Our midline is the first structure that forms in the womb. And then after a while, really taking your time to slowly, slowly uncurl. Slowly. Gradually opening from the earth up to the heaven. And then you can gradually also bring your hands up to heaven, maybe even looking up to heaven and feeling that lightness, quality, the light quality of the governing and conception. So now with the same fingers connected, the thumb and the little finger, well, you're going to open them up and then bring your index, middle and ring finger to touch the palm of your hand so that now your thumb and your little finger are in space, but your other three fingers are turned down. So you've got that movement looking like that. So now we're going to connect with a few movements for the stepping vessels. So we want to have our fingers turned down to the earth because the stepping is in its name. It's about stepping and our connection to earth. So we'll do a little bit of stepping and really activating the lower part of our body just through a simple stepping movement. The stepping is also about how we alternate between the left and the right sides of our body, but also how we alternate between yin and yang. Because of course, as our leg on the ground is yin and our leg in the space lifting up is yang. So we're constantly moving between our yin and our yang as we walk. We also, when we walk, we could walk forwards. That's quite yang. But we could also walk backwards. So even in the active, it's all relative, <laughs> yin and yang, we could be walking backwards. There is also, of course, that capacity to turn, held within the walking or the stepping vessels. It's really about how we adapt in the current moment. It's the fastest moving of all, or the pair, is the fastest moving of all the extraordinary vessels because they regulate our daily cycle. So they have the most direct link with the 12 meridians. And the other thing that they have is they both end at bladder one, the inside corner of the eye. So if we're walking with our eyes closed, <laughs> we have to balance a bit more and we have to sense in a different way than if we're walking with our eyes open. And we can even try balancing with one leg off the ground and closing our eyes and really feel how we're constantly having to adapt our body to stay upright. And we can feel that connection between our feet and our brain. And you may find this mudra actually helps you to feel more stable and balanced. And we'll do it on the other side. You can close your eyes and feel how that, the mudra may help you feel a bit more balanced in the stepping vessel movement. But stepping, we're not always stepping, it's also about 
our presence, the present moment, and our presence in the present moment. So our basic body posture, physically who we are, emotionally who we are, we can't separate that. That's also the stepping, and we could close our eyes. It's also about how we regulate our sleep-wake cycle. So when we wake up, going into the yang, when we close our eyes and go to sleep, going into the yin. So if someone has difficulty sleeping or making these day-to-day -day adjustments, this mudra can be quite helpful because it's quite centering and grounding, I feel. So now we go back to the inner family, the penetrating and the girdle, and their mudra is a bit different because it's the thumb for the earth, the middle finger and the index finger, middle for heart protector, um, and fourth finger for triple heater and gallbladder. And they're more earthy. They balance the conception of the governing. They're about our incarnation coming into our connection with the earth, especially penetrating vessel, which is the first movement from the center, from our physical center, from our perineum, down our legs to the earth. So with this, I like to connect the fingers, the thumb, the middle, the fourth, but the index and the little as well. So we get this centering and then we can move that mudra down our legs, turning down like we did for governing and conception, but we curl down and we reach our feet and we feel that connection to the earth. And then we draw slowly back up from the earth this is also an aspect of the penetrating vessel, the chong, that we make our earth more fertile. So we bring the fertility from the soil back into our centre. And from that centre, we can express our fertility. But it also links to our heart and to our breasts, where we can feed a baby. So we can feel that moving to the two sides. Our breasts are our inner wings, so we could just do a movement of, of gently opening our inner wings, but then connecting back to the centre. So we open our inner wings, and then we connect back to the centre. And then we can also take this mudra up to our throat, and then to our eyes, maybe touching our eyes with the index finger, so we keep our hands together. But then we also have that a slightly different quality of balancing. So you can stand on one leg and this time bring it behind you rather than stepping. So sending the knee energy down to the earth and then opening up our inner wings of the heart, keeping the mudra just in the one hand. And feeling a stability. So it's so the penetrating is really that basic connection to the earth. Before we can step, we have to arrive on the earth. And link, its links with the breasts are very much about our connection to our mother, how we were first welcomed and fed after birth. So we can just do the movement on the other side, opening up our heart, feeling that connection between the earth and our heart, quite a stabilizing, making sure your fingers are connecting with the midline. And then slowly bringing that leg down. Same mudra, but we're connecting with the girdle vessel. So girdle vessel is really the center. So we can just do a gentle movement of spiraling on our heel from our center. So really feeling the girdle in the center, 
gathering everything in girdle vessel has a dual action of holding within our pelvis, within our girdle, but also releasing. So really feel that spiraling around the center, spiraling around the do and the ren, the governing and the conception, and then moving into the space around. But it's quite centering, quite earthy. And then feel that your hands are still connected, but you can put that the points where they will meet the middle, the um, ring and the thumb on your hips, on your anterior superior iliac spine and do the movement and feel, if you can feel the two sides connecting in the center where you just had the mudra. Can you feel, if you hold the sides of the girdle vessel, that connection back to the center? You can do it also with a like a spiraling and to keep the mudra in the hands, but feel the connection in the space around you. Girdle is the most yang of all the vessels and it's what protects us and supports us all around, like a cloak. Sometimes I have that as a girdle vessel, but it's the wrapping, it, it is actually in our upper and our lower body. So it's like a cloak of protection. But then we can come gradually back in. And now we can start to do a figure of eight on its side. So we keep our feet anchored. We need to be anchored also in the girdle and do a, a figure of eight on its side, but connecting into our center. So again, our hands could either be on our anterior superior iliac spine and we just feel the connection into the center or we can put the mudra right into the center to help us connect with our center as we do our figure of eight on its side, our scat. And then at some point we need to change the direction of our scat, So we do it the other way around. Girdle is also very good for coordination and supporting movement between the left and the right sides of the body, but more from our hips and our pelvis. So then just come to rest for a moment with the mudra and see if you can feel this crossroads in our body, our crossroads where we have the chong going down to the earth, and the chong moving up to heaven and the girdle containing the two. You might even want to close your eyes. And then using the same fingers, but this time we bring our hands apart. This is the mudra for the linking vessels. So the regulating points of the linking vessels are heart protector six and triple heater five, which are the paired points of the penetrating vessel and the girdle vessel. And the way balances our legs. So when we can stand, our arms are freer. So when we stand at age one, our arms are freer and we can remember that we're not only human and we can stand and walk and run and turn but we still have our celestial nature and we have, we are connected to the birds as well and so our arms are like our wings the bigger wings so the chong are the little wings of our heart and the way are the big wings that we can open into space but we can also gather back into our heart so we can open up our heart to space, to others as well. Not just to space, but to other humans or beings. And then bring that energy back and receive in the linking. Receive in our heart. So all these organs are connected with all of the vessels. But each of the vessels have a different relationship to the heart. 
So with the linking, we're quite light in our feet. It's really the balance with the stepping where that begins in the feet. The linking, it begins in the arms, like the bird flying. So we're quite light in our feet. We might even actually want to just lift one of our legs up and be light, like a bird, just gently opening up, leaning forward, and coming back down, and opening up, perhaps leaning forward and gathering in. And then we might also want to find a movement of more spiraling, Changing direction, turning. Birds don't always fly forwards, they spiral and move. So feeling that spiraling movement, keeping the mudra spiraling out your arms and moving into space, being quite light on your legs, your feet. then it's important to find a balance with them all. So gradually just coming back to the starting position, standing, but this time with the mudra for all of the vessels to help that balance between all of them. So this is the thumb and the index finger, which forms the eight, and then the middle, the ring and the little finger and place it on the organ that you feel you most need it on. So if you could want to play, have a bit more connection with the earth, you might want to place it, um, the eight on your pubic bone and feel a connection down to the earth. Through your palaces and your kidneys. You might want to place the middle finger and your thumb, the eight, on the center of your heart, CV17, with your fingers facing out to others, to others who are sharing this time with us, connecting our hearts. You might want to bring it up to your brain, either your third eye or the crown, crown chakra or bahue point the hundred places of meeting and connect with your fingers facing up to heaven. And then you might even want to close your eyes while you're standing or you might want to gradually bring back down through to your heart, through to your pelvis, as you come down to the ground and you might want to find a sitting position again and we can spend a few minutes meditating with the mudra in the position for four, all eight either connecting to the earth either connecting out to others or connecting to heaven, whichever you feel you most need and you can change, <laughs> but have your eyes closed. And with your eyes closed, become aware of the internal movement of all eight vessels. this spiraling movement between our brain and our heart, our kidneys and our palaces. 
but that is supported by our connection to heaven and to earth. So we'll just sit here for a few minutes together, being aware of these more subtle inner movements of the vessel. As you feel these inner movements, if you want to stay meditating for longer, you might just want to pause the recording. You can stay for longer. And when you stay as long as you want, to ease out of the meditation, it can be helpful to feel your connection with earth. And to feel your connection with heaven. Before you slowly open your eyes. And thank you for sharing this time with me.